So we're going to talk about DNA replication. So what is it? Well, we need to go back and look at our DNA molecule here. And if you haven't already, I really recommend check out the What is DNA video. Click on the double helix there, it'll take you to it. So DNA replication is the process where identical copies of the DNA are made. In this video, we're going to ask two main questions about DNA replication. Why do we need it? And how does it happen? Let's start with the why. So why is DNA replication necessary? Well, it's necessary because new cells are being made all the time. And we're making new cells all of the time because living things need new cells for things like growth, right? If you take you and me, for example, we started our lives as one cell. We have grown to the point where we are now made of trillions of cells. So we definitely need new cells for growth. We also need new cells for maintenance and repair of dead or damaged cells. And we need new cells, of course, for reproduction. So they are the reasons why new cells are required. And of course, we know the DNA is the information that tells every cell exactly what to do and how to do it. So of course, that means every time a new cell is made, it needs to have an identical copy of that DNA. And that's, of course, why DNA replication is so important and so necessary. That's the why. Let's take a look at the how. I'm going to bring in a diagram to help us talk about the how. Now, here's a double helix here. Now, it's a little bit small. So I'm just going to bring back this original diagram because we know the DNA is a double helix. And we know that in that double helix, the nucleotides have those nitrogen bases which poke out and pair up with each other. And complementary base pairing occurs. Complementary base pairing between A and T and between C and G. Well, that complementary base pairing is a vital component and a critical mechanism in how DNA replication takes place. The thing we haven't yet talked about, about DNA, is that the double helix is actually able to unzip. And that's what we're going to see here. If I move this sheet of paper down, you'll see the DNA double helix starting to unzip and those two strands are moving in opposite directions. That occurs and is helped out by some enzymes called DNA helicases. It's the feature of DNA being able to unzip that makes this type of DNA replication possible. Now the other thing you see in this diagram are these nucleotides. These are free nucleotides that are available in the nucleus that have not yet bound to another base and started to form a DNA molecule. But once our DNA strands have unzipped, we now have these exposed bases that are no longer paired up with their complementary base. So the free nucleotides are able to move in and bind in a complementary manner to their corresponding pair. And if I slide this paper down further, you'll see that's exactly what's taken place. Now there's some enzymes that help that to occur called DNA polymerases. And okay, I can remove that piece of paper now. You can see this process of DNA replication has been going on down this strand following along and pairing up free nucleotides with the exposed bases here. And we end up with what we call a new strand and an original strand or an old strand. And if you look, if you trace this back, the original strand is a lighter color here. If I move my finger along and trace that back, you'll see it's called the original strand because it's come from the original molecule of DNA and same with the other one here that's our original strand too. The darker one we actually call the darker one the new strand because the new strand is formed from these free nucleotides that were in, in the nucleus and so we end up with 
two new molecules of DNA. They are, of course, identical to each other because they've been formed from the original strand, which acts as a template. It's also known as the template strand. And because that acts as a template for the complementary bases of these free nucleotides, we end up with two identical strands of DNA. They're made up of one original strand, or old strand, and one new strand. Because of the way it occurs, we've got a special name for DNA replication. We call it semi-conservative replication. And I've got one more diagram that's a little simpler that might help you to understand that semi-conservative idea. Okay, so here's this simplified diagram. I've got a very small part of a DNA double helix which I've unwound so it looks just like a ladder. It's not spiralled up into its double helix anymore. And remember, the critical part, the first part of DNA replication that needs to occur is for these strands to unzip. So to show them unzipping, I'm just going to move them apart like we can see here. Now in red up here, because we're inside the nucleus, these are our free nucleotides. They haven't yet formed part of a DNA molecule. I've drawn them in red not because they're any different, right? They're actually exactly the same and would look no different to the nucleotides that form this strand. I've just used a different colour so that when they come in and pair up, we can see what's new and what's old. By new, I mean what's been formed by the red nucleotide, the free nucleotides, and by old, I mean what's come from the original DNA molecule. So our free nucleotides are going to come in and pair up. So here we go, that's taking place here. Free nucleotides pairing up, of course, this will be happening in a complementary manner. And same thing with the other side, free nucleotides pairing up. And we end up with now two separate molecules of DNA. Both will be identical to each other and both are made of one strand that is the old strand from the original molecule and one strand that is a new strand formed from free nucleotides. If I take this away, we can see here's what we started with, here's what we finished with. They are both identical to this molecule. However, they're made from one old strand and one brand new strand. And because of that, we call DNA replication semi-conservative. Because every time the DNA molecule copies itself, half of the molecule will be conserved from the original and half of the molecule will be brand new. So that is why DNA replication is necessary and how DNA replication occurs. I really hope it helps you to understand. If you've got any questions, as always, I'd love to hear from you. I hope this has helped and I'll see you next time. Okay, do it.